This is the 2020 Yamaha MT-03. We're talking about 321 cc's of offset twin, fuel injected and liquid cooled. That's the engine right here. Okay. I ceramic wrapped the exhaust tubes. There's two of them. They come down here and they form a header right before this oxygen sensor. And then there's a catalytic converter right there. That then dumps the exhaust into this short pipe here. Now I've secured it with a lock and metal bar here, with a disc lock here, and with a motion sensitive alarm module right here. The reason I'm making this video is to document that I rode it yesterday 400 miles from 10.30 a.m. until 6.30 p.m. And if you look at the seating geometry, this is not a cruiser. At highway speeds between 50 and 80 miles per hour, the engine's between 5,000 and 8,500 RPMs. Hovering around 70, it's around 7,000 or so. What this means is that it's a little bit buzzy, although glass smooth. The engine in this motorcycle is refined in the R3 race bike for almost nine years. And more than 300 improvements were made in order to produce earlier torque and better mid-range power in this model. Incredibly, the fuel economy when driving this on the freeway oscillates between 52 and 85 miles per gallon on regular pump gas. Now I want to point out that this seat, the OEM seat, is too firm and not compliant enough to be comfortable for more than 250 miles. Specifically, this inner edge on the inside of your thigh puts a lot of pressure. It's great for 15 to 20 minute blasts around town. It's great for up to an hour, maybe even two hours, but not all day riding. If you are going to use the MT-03 as a cruiser on the highway, get a windscreen. Uh -oh. The main idea here is that the windscreen here helps to send the air over your helmet to reduce what's called buffering or buffeting, which will shove your head around a lot, even if you're wearing a full face helmet that's aero optimized. The only thing I would recommend if you are gonna do a lot of highway is a taller windscreen, something that sends the air completely around you because your head is gonna get shoved around a lot at 70, 80 miles per hour. It can sit there all day. The cooling system, the engine, the drivetrain, perfectly fit for cruising on the highway. This is really better in city. If you're going to get a highway cruiser, you wanna use it on the highway a lot. I don't use it on the highway a lot. I commute to work on short blasts, right? It takes me 17 minutes to get to work. I live in a, a hill called Mount Olympus in Issaquah. I work in downtown Bellevue. That's 16 miles, including the low speed surface streets. That's less than 20 minutes one way. This is great for under 20 minutes, but it's not ideal. The short wheelbase, that's the distance between the front and the rear, also enables the bike to rock around a lot on uneven surface stretches on the freeway or highway. If you do a lot of highway, this is not a great bike. This is a great all rounder. It was $6,000 brand new, all said. It's less expensive to insure because it has a smaller engine. In Washington state, you have to have liability insurance. I use Geico. This video is droning on, but the point is the Yamaha MT-03 is effectively made in Indonesia and is considered the crack cocaine to get you into the Yamaha MT-07 or MT-09. And larger displacement motorcycles are going to be better on the highway because they'll operate at a lower RPM with longer gearing. And that's going to be better for sustaining long high-speed travel with less vibration, noise, and harshness. They'll also have a longer wheelbase, a much better windscreen, and better seating geometry. And uh, better wind protection, better noise protection. They tend to be more comfortable. This is great for people in their teens, 20s, 30s, 40s, or very physically fit people in their 50s, 60s, and 70s who want to use it in town, around town, between towns, even highway stretches. I'm not saying you can't use this as a highway cruiser. I'm in uh, central western Oregon, and I came from western Washington, so 369 miles plus small detours. We stopped a couple of times for refueling and at the the rest stop boy rest stop let me tell you what a lifesaver a great place to take a sip of water a great place to take a leak you know a, a great place to grab a snack and stretch actually sitting on one of these machines for more than 50 minutes can cost
cause fatigue and you don't want to become fatigued because that's dangerous. On a motorcycle, any kind of error from the rider can result in a fatal act or a serious lifelong injury. So you want to get a good night's sleep, wake up refreshed. If you're going to do a long road trip on this, don't do it to the point of exhaustion. If you're tired after 250 or 300 miles, go to a campsite, go to a hotel, lock it up, call it a day, drink some water, eat a healthy meal, get a good night's sleep, and then start your journey. It's not a race. Life is about the journey, not a race. This isn't a race bike. Its top speed is 112. It cruises nicely between 50 and 70 in, in sixth gear. Fifth and sixth gear on this bike are really overdrive. Fourth gear is magical. You could leave it in fourth gear and get to the top speed. That's where the torque and horsepower and gearing come together to produce really good vehicle dynamics in the MT-03. Now, I've only put around 3,000 miles on it. We don't get a lot of warm, sunny weather in Western Washington. Down here in Central Oregon, they actually have a real summer, and we're thinking about moving here for that exact reason. But the, the bike here only gets maybe 70 days of short burst rides per year and sit. So we're looking at, you know, 800 miles a year or so. Now doing a long 400 mile one way road trip like this will help to log the miles. I change the oil and do the maintenance myself. I clean the chain. I check the valve lash. I do any kind of basic coolant changes. The subject of upcoming YouTube videos on maintenance and repairs. But that's all for this one. Thanks again for watching. If you like this video, please give it a like. And if you like my channel, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you around. That is the Electric XP 3.0 Step Through E-Bike with 150 pounds of carrying capacity utility rack, hydraulic brakes, front suspension. Meg and I both use it. It's amazing.